Okay, so in this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to make your salt and pepper shakers. Um, you have already seen the slideshow. Part of this assignment is sketching it out. So just a review of the sketch. Um, you'll be filling out this page. You'll utilize the whole page. You'll do three or more ideas. And then once you have an idea that you like, you'll redraw it with more details. I was crunched for time, some of it for a potato, but I expect you guys to be more creative than that. Okay, so my sketches are now done. I'm moving on to my clay. So first thing you do is you're going to take nice fresh clay from your brick and it needs to be no more than a pound. Of course, we're gonna hollow these out. So the method we're learning is hollow out. So again, make sure you weigh it right around a pound. Uh, when you do decide on your form, make sure it has like mass or an organic shape, nothing too tubular, like a cactus would be really hard to hollow out or like um, anything like a snake is too skinny. So again, here's the shark, here's some birds. I'm doing a potato. Okay, so I took two pieces of clay and I sized them. Luckily with potatoes, they don't have to be equal, but you can have them match or different. And then you're gonna cut them in half. Okay, so I have two going. And you cut your water clay, just cut it right down. Boop. Try to get it even, but it's okay if it's not, because you're gonna put it back together. Okay, so after you cut it in half, you might have to go to the ladies room and dry it. I mean, if you notice that my clay has no details yet, um, I will do that after I put it back together. It's just general. So like if I was doing the shark, I would do maybe I could sketch the face on, but I really wouldn't add the fin until he was re put back together. So general to specific. So here's one that I've already done that I've gutted. Okay. So after you do that, you're going to take your pin tool and you're going to go around the edge, fourth of an inch. Okay. And then you're gonna remove the inside. So again, it might be helpful to go dry the outside so it's kind of like a shell. And then the easy way to do this is like kind of when you do an avocado. Again, if the clay is too soft and it distorts your form, then you'd want to go to the ladies room or boys room and dry it. Using a lube tool, you'll start removing the inside. Uh, be careful when you do this not to do any undercuts over here or you have to fill it in. And you'll just scoop it out, little at a little, until it's nice and smooth, completely fourth of an inch. The places that are gonna get tricky are the corners. There's always weight there. So again, if you need to, you can always stab through with your pin tool, engage it, and you know it's fourth of an inch. I know this is fourth of an inch. All of you guys think you know fourth of an inch, but you don't at this point. But look at that ruler, that is fourth of an inch. Your vase should have been this thin. This is truly fourth of an inch. Okay, now before we put this back together, you're going to take it and you're going to cut the bottom off as well. Boop. So you have something like this. Uh, the reason we do that is before when we used to just cut them right down the middle and put the stopper in it, it would always tear at the bottom. So we're adding a new bottom. Uh, then you're gonna take your pin tool and you're going to score the edges. You might need to hold it, but it should be stiff enough to hold its shape. And again, you want that coming out over the edge. So you get that little grip. Again, we score in slips so things grab onto each other. So now I'm gonna add my slip. Okay, both sides are done. I squeeze it back together. Okay, and then right here, I took a flat piece of clay and I'm adding a different bottom. So again, I already flattened it a fourth of an inch. You can tell from the pin tool. I'm just gonna trace this. Okay, now before I stick it on, I'm gonna take a marker cap. I'm gonna drill in the hole so nothing splits. Okay, now I'm gonna go around and score these edges. my slip and I'm going to attach the bottom okay to secure that seam I can paddle I'm gonna paddle this way okay if I still see my seam because my clay is a little drier from my demo then I'm gonna go around like this and add little Frankenstein dashes is what I like to call them. And then using really soft clay from my brick, little pieces, 
I can smooth this in so it pulls together and then I can scrape that or paddle that so you don't see the seam. So you shouldn't see any seams. And then after this is all done, I'm gonna come back and add all my details of the potato. So I'll start using little tools to give it a texture. Uh, to do the holes in the top, I'm just gonna use a pencil and a pen tool. How many holes does a salt and pepper shaker need? We've done the research on this and one needs two and the other one needs three. Thank you. Mm-hmm, yeah. Uh, make sure they're, they're actually kind of bigger than you would think because they'll shrink. And then glaze kind of fills up the hole too. So if you make them a little big, that's good because the glaze will fill it in. If you make them a little small, then when we go to glaze, you just want to make sure you clean those out with a pipe cleaner so they don't fill in with the glaze. So bigger holes if you're okay with glaze, smaller holes if that makes you nervous. And then um, when I get back, you'll leave these bagged up and then we'll paint them bright colors. So you could do stuff like this. Yeah. 